الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الاحباب there's no benefit or better yet i should say do not give importance to those things which do not benefit you in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid debating and arguing about the religion because that is the path of destruction and that goes against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah says in the Quran وَجَادَلُهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٍ Allah orders us to deal with them in speech or debate them with that which is better meaning the Quran with delil and evidence but do not debate and argue and get into controversy for the sake of controversy for the sake of voicing your concern and your opinion and your view and your madhab or what have you but instead it should only be for the pleasure of Allah if, if, if it becomes necessary as an act of worship to establish the proof to establish the hujjah and with evidence from Kitab al Sunnah. Listen to the statement of Imam Ahmed, and we've already covered it in our lessons about Usul al Sunnah. Qal Imam Ahmed, one of the four uh, Imams of the Arba Madahib, Qal, Wa anna la yukhasim ahadin, wa la yunadaru, wa la yata'alam jidal, fa inna al kalama, fa inna al kalama fil qadri, wa ru'yati, wa ru'yati, wa al Quran, wa gayraha, min al Sunnan, makruhun. ومن هي عنه لا يكون صاحبه وإن أصاب بكلامه السنة من أهل السنة حتى يدعى جدال ويسلم ويؤمن بالآثار إمام أحمد سيد رحمه الله تعالى which verifies for us don't, don't get into issues that have no benefit for you so and so's off it I heard about this about so and so this imam is this Unless it is for the sake of your deen. It doesn't mean you do not listen to warnings against individuals who deviated from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is in fact a part of the deen. But for you, especially you and I as beginner, beginning students of knowledge or uh, the general people, to get involved in the, that controversy and spend your time on that and you don't wake up for fajr. And you don't involve yourself in that which is going to benefit you in your religion. Imam Ahmed said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, and do not uh, argue or with anyone or debate with them. And do not study or learn uh, argumentation and those things about co uh, controversy and debating. For verily, Speaking about the Qadr, then he gives us some specific examples in his time of how Ahl al-Bidah had went astray about debating and delving in the Qadr, which we have people this, this day and age as well who do this. Uh, for verily, speech about the, uh, the decree and about the ru'ya, you know, about uh, the, the believers uh, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment or the ru'ya, did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did he see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not, and how, or how, how did he uh, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Was it with his heart, or did he really uh, see with his eyes? All of these things, these debates, do not involve yourself in. وَغَيْرَهَا مِنَ sunan And other than that, or, or about the Qur'an, the issue of the Qur'an, which the Jahmiya claimed that the Qur'an was makhluk, that it was created, and, and other groups deviated with regarding to the Qur'an. Avoid these things. Avoid getting into debates, especially if you don't have the knowledge to deal with that and chop the head off the doubtfulness. He said, for verily, debating about these things, it is that it is disliked and it is prohibited. So the makru here, and Allah knows best, but the salaf, Usually, uh, often in their text, when they use the term makru, is unlike the makru we use now with fiqh, for example. For when fiqh, uh, the more contemporary scholars they use makru 
in the with the uh, five uh, ahkam of uh, fiqh, saying makru meaning disliked. But makru to the salaf often meant haram or that it was something that it was hated and it was haram, impermissible. So this kind of thing in learning these things and debating in these things was hated and considered prohibited by the salaf. And then Imam Ahmed said, so if the one who gets involved in this, if he is correct in his speech, in his argumentation, uh, and achieve, uh, attains the sunnah, وَإِنْ أَصَابَ بِكَلَامِهِ sunnah مِنْ أَهْلَ sunnah حَتَّى يَدَى جِدَال وَيُسَلَّمْ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِالْأَثَارَ I think there's possibly a mistake in the text in this particular nusukh, but what he's referring to here is that even if a person who involves himself in debating, but they don't have knowledge and they should not be debating, that even if they get the correct answer, but they're not a person of the sunnah, they're a person of innovation, that, that does not make them from Ahl sunnah That does not make them from Ahl sunnah even if they were correct in this particular issue. And especially until, as Imam Ahmed said, Hatta yada jidal, until they leave debating and getting into controversial issues. Will you sell them? That they are, uh, they accept the text. They accept the Qur'an and the, and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If Allah says in the Qur'an, as Allah says in the Qur'an, Ar-Rahman ar ars istawa that the most, uh, the most merciful rose above his throne. Ahl sunnah yusallam. They are accepting of the text. They don't debate it. They don't ask how. They don't negate it. They don't try to explain it away. La yusallam. This is the tariqah to Ahl sunnah This is the way of Ahl sunnah But the one who does not sallam, they will look and strive to make it fit their intellect, or their sheikh's intellect, or their madhab, or what have you, instead of accepting the nasus as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. So he says that until they leave off getting in controversy and accepting the text, will yu'min bil athar, and, and believing in the narrations. This is the tariqah to Ahlul Sunnah, and may Allah protect us from. Uh, getting into controversy and those things which have no benefit for us and may Allah forgive us and help us to work on ourselves and focus on our deen and bless us with ikhlas with the bat wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam